right as you can see engines out again hopefully that's the last time the mock-up engine needs to be in there so that one's on the floor over here we pulled that out i think we did time lapse it but i can't remember at the end of the last video so that was what we used to mock everything out you can see the turbo and all's on it down pipes on it screamer pipes on it transmissions on it we know that fits in the car that's all good so hopefully we won't need to put that back in again now i think we've sorted the drive shafts we've sorted the engine mounts gear linkages clutch all that stuff our radiator mount you see that a bit closer there now so we're out we're gonna clean this all up sam has put some new brake lines in when he was down the other weekend so we're going to try and clean this up now paint it up ready to accept the final engine so that brings us on to the final engine which is going to be this engine the one on the floor has got a window in the block so we're not going to go too mad with the engine it's just a light freshen up really don't really want to get into a full-blown engine rebuild for a minute if we can avoid it so sam's plan obviously we're not chasing crazy power figures here obviously we know these engines will make a lot of power very easily that isn't the game here <laughs> for a moment anyway so we're just going to give the engine a bit of a freshen up strip everything off it clean it all up do the time and chain put a new oil pump in it just for safety clean everything up new gaskets here and there seals try and make sure we haven't got any leaks and stuff but the actual long block is going to stay complete as it is the, the car was running great when it was taken out there's no reason to take it apart obviously as soon as you start pulling the head off and stuff you just basically just spend a load of money because while you've got it off you might as well do this might as well do that before you know it you spent quite a large sum of money on the engine so i think this engine is just going to go in as is cleaned up like i just said not to say in the future you won't have another engine that you're going to go through put rods and pistons and stuff in if, if you're chasing a bit more power but quite honestly i think initially this is going to be pretty epic as is so we're going to basically tear this apart now rip the inlet off i've already got the sump off get time and time and chain covers and all that junk off the side so we can get all, get all the time and chain apart and stuff and we'll just go from there basically Right, okay, so we've got that torn apart now, bits of over the floor. So I think that's largely as far as it's going to come apart. Just need to drop the oil pump off. And then we're just going to clean the block up. So yeah, pull the oil pump off, pull the timing chain off, got a new timing chain to go on it, new oil pump chain, new oil pump, obviously new guides and everything, new tensioner. And got all the seals and gaskets for that stuff, the VTEC solenoid, intake manifold, thermostat housing, just all the rubber bits basically try and get all that replaced because it's at that age where if you don't it will leak so we're gonna, and obviously if once you've taken it off you definitely want to replace it so whip those last few bits off and then we're going to start cleaning it up okay can't remember where i left off but the engine's kind of torn down just giving it a really quick clean up with the wire wheel not worried about that at all uh, so put a new oil pump on new timing chain new oil pump chain all the tensioners and guides everything like that so i've just cleaned that up new oil seal in it cleaned the gasket faces up so that can be refitted now with some sealant um so really it's just going to be a case of cleaning up all the bits and pieces got a new water pump to go on obviously new intake gaskets so basically everything that's come off will go back on with a fresh gasket gonna modify the sump for a drain for the turbo oil return probably modify the rocket cover for a couple of breathers uh, i've got the intake manifold just in the bench at the moment just giving that a quick clean up the wire wheel as well clean up the face as well and we got the well the water pump housing thermostat housing stuff that needs cleaning up and just slowly bolt everything back on get the engine built back up again on the stand and then i'm gonna put a fresh well put the flywheel back on it change the crank seal and that in first uh, i'm gonna put a fresh clutch in it obviously got a aftermarket clutch to go on it and then I just want to modify the gearbox. I'm not 100% happy with the release fork. I think I need to make it a bit longer. I feel like we've got, we, we haven't got as much leverage as we need and we're, we're, we're overstroking it. So we might as well take advantage and have a slightly longer lever, make the clutch pedal a bit lighter. So I need to modify that before it goes back in the car. Well, it's a lot easier. So yeah, I'm going to just clean this up one last time, reseal that side cover, 
and put all that stuff back together, put the crank pulley on, and we'll come back once hopefully a bit more of it's assembled. So the videos have been very hit and miss. I've just been doing this in between other stuff, so I can't ever remember what I recorded before. So hopefully I can put all these clips together and make some kind of sense of it. It's a new oil pump as well, I don't know if I mentioned that. Right, just taped up, very roughly, just going to touch up the engine bay. Right, okay, you can see I've just taped around the outsides of the engine bay. Just put a quick splash of paint on the two wings, obviously everything we've mounted over here. Cover that in some paint and there were some areas over here that were all beaten up with a hammer so we've kind of straightened all that out splashed some paint on it just to make it look a bit tidier and um, obviously in preparation now for dropping the engine in for the final time so just get all this done now while there's nothing in the way so you let that paint go dry now uh, and then we're going to hopefully tidy up some of the other bits and pieces at the back that still need sorting out there's a few little wiring issues to sort out as well while we can get in there a bit easier and then the engine can be swung back in hopefully for the last time so we've got the engine on the stand here, just sat a rocket cover on in temporary, that's not the one that's going to stay on here obviously. Just going to keep all the crap out the top end. Back of the engine's still bare at the moment, so we're going to, probably next job is, we've got a few more bits to bolt on the front. We we'll have to then drop the engine back off the stand, and we'll do the crank seal this end of the engine, obviously done the one that end. And we've got to put the flywheel and clutch and everything on. Uh, transmission then can go back on, once we've modified the clutch arm. And then we aren't going to be far away from dropping in. Right, okay, so, got the engine bay pretty much ready to go here now. Giving it a splash of paint. I've just realized we've got a small hole there in the bulkhead, which I think is where the uh, speedo cable used to go through. So I need to just cut a little plate to weld over that. Otherwise we'll have a pretty big hole in the bulkhead, which you don't want. And I think that is largely then ready to drop the engine back in again. I've got as far as I can with the engine for a minute, and I've got a different rocker cover to go on it and weld some breather fittings in the top of it and also a sump to sort of modify to put the drain for the turbo obviously and stuff on it and until I put the sump back on I don't want to drop it off the engine crane because it's a bit of an awkward thing to to drop down if you haven't got the sump on it and I can see that new oil pump getting damaged so I'm going to wait until we've got the sump for that before we drop that off and then obviously we can do the crank seal this end put the flow on clutch and all and then the box can go back on so talking of the box I wanted to make some adjustments to that before it went in for the last time. I remember in some earlier videos I made the adapter to convert it so you can use a um, conventional mechanical cable to release the clutch rather than obviously the Honda was hydraulic before. And I know I did convert my 306 to hydraulic but I was trying to avoid doing that on this because it's a lot of work and it adds a lot of complexion and potential problems. So I made up the bracket and everything as you saw before. Uh, it worked clutch released in and out but it was fairly heavy and I just felt like we needed some more leverage I felt that we were probably overstroking the clutch and we could have reduced the pedal effort by having a bit more leverage so you can see I've extended the release arm now and obviously brought the cable mount out but what I've actually done is modify the original clutch arm so you can now bolt on this end piece uh, the idea being because I still don't really know whether this is going to be right whether it needs to be longer again or if that's going to be too long and we're not going to stroke the clutch enough so I've made it so it's bolt on. So once this is all in the car, all said and done, if this is wrong, you've only got to unbolt the extension piece, change it and bolt it back on again. Because obviously as it was before, if you want to change that, it's literally transmission off the engine, clutch arm out, modify it and put the whole thing back together again, which is a lot of work. So now it's a nice, easy job. Hopefully that might be right where it is. I kind of roughly guesstimated where I thought it needed to be. So I'm hoping that might be correct straight off the bat. So I've got all that bolted in, I've transferred the mount across, this is a different transmission now to the, what was in the car before, this is the one that we know is definitely good. That's the mount for the shifter cables, it's an aftermarket job that came with that aftermarket shifter. Got the reverse lockout solenoid there, speedo sensor on the back, got a couple drive shaft seals, we've got new ones to go in there while it's apart, it makes sense. Obviously a new release bearing, a new clutch, it's an aftermarket clutch. So the transmission is pretty much ready to bolt on the engine as soon as that's ready to go now. <clears throat> so yeah, wait for a few more bits to turn up and we'll hopefully get that engine and transmission put together and then we can slot it back where it came from and hopefully that's the last time we need to actually bolt the engine in the car and we can start wiring everything up, plumbing everything up, fuel system, cooling system, obviously put the drive shafts in, they're all done now, I can't remember if I videoed that. Here on the floor back here. 
for the two dummy shafts that I made and then I've put together the new CV joints, new boots and everything on those custom axles that we have machined. So they should literally just drop in factory and should hopefully be able to start coming back together again. All right, so we've got that all sorted out, ready now in the car side of things. So we're gonna turn our attention back to the actual engine itself. So you can see you've got the sump bolt back on, sealed on now. I was waiting to do that before I took it off the stand because I was worried about damaging that oil pump otherwise. So you can see we've got a bung for the oil temperature and the turbo drain on the sump there now. So I'm gonna flip this back around now and take the engine off the stand because if we need to actually get in to this end of the, this end of the engine now to do that crank seal. And then we can start putting the flywheel and clutch and all that stuff back together, get the transmission bolted on, uh, and then we can probably put it back in the car. Well, that's the plan anyway. Right, got the engine up in the area now. So just while we got it apart, we've done the crank seal this end, new pilot bearing as well. So get the flywheel bolted on now. Got an aftermarket kit, which comes with a light and flywheel, or see the friction disc and the pressure plate, and a new release bearing. So we'll get all this bolted up. And then we can see about putting the transmission on. So we've got the flywheel bolted on now, clutches in there as well. We'll be pushed in a new pilot bearing, and I showed that in the last clip. So we're ready to bolt the gearbox back on now as well. So you've got that new arm, new release bearing. Obviously, always worth putting new in whenever you've got a gearbox off. The only last job I just quickly want to do before we put it in is I've got a couple of drive shaft seals just to stick in there so we don't have to worry about that leaking. Okay, there's one other little job I've forgotten about that I've just done. There's a little hole here, I welded a plate over it. That was where the original mechanical speedo cable used to go through. Luckily I noticed it, because that would have been a bit more awkward once the engine's back in again. So I've just welded a plate over there and splashed some paint on it. Okay, so I failed on the filming again. I've got the box bolted up, I've got the manifold on. I've left the turbo off for a minute, because it just makes it easier for putting in. Got the gear linkage support brackets on, the modified mount is on, the clutch linkage is on. I've put that half, the drive shaft and the carrier bearing on, just because it's easier when it's out. New oil filter, obviously. So I'll set the camera back up on a time lapse and we'll see about swinging this in. swung it back in. Obviously I haven't got the back mount on yet, so it's sitting a bit of a funny angle because it didn't pull in the engine back where it's supposed to be. It should be up like that. Um, but that's good enough. We can move the car now, put it back on the lift where we can work on it a bit easier.